Shalom, Yasha'Allah, his brother Mapa Thok. That'd be key, but in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. And it's going to be a quick video um, just going into how um, the elect um, started off as slaves. You understand? We started off as nothing but slaves, right? Bywords, niggers, right? Um, niggers, thugs, gangsters, right? This is how we're portrayed on the earth, right? Ever since we've been taken from our homeland and brought into slavery, right? And even before that, um, just speaking about um, the Israelites, right? Um, even when you take Yahweh Shai for an example, Yahweh Shai was despised when he walked the earth, right? Yahweh Shai was seen as nothing, right? By many, I should say, right? The elect understood who he was, but many looked down on him. Many, many thought he was um, an evil man. Right? Many thought he was um just a, a, a nigga, man. Right? Because Yahweh Shai came from nothing. You understand? That's why in John the first chapter, you will see how Nathaniel said, what good? I believe it was Nathaniel. I'm so lucky if I'm wrong, but he said, what good could come out of Galilee? Right? And how much more us? And um, I want to get this quick precept. But before we go into the words of the Lord, um, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rukakadash. You understand? And I want to dive right into this thing and, um, with 1 Corinthians 1. Right? So this is 1 Corinthians 1 and verse um, it's 26, right? And, it's, and it reads, For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. So not many of those that are wise after the flesh are called into this truth. Right. Not many noble, meaning not the doctors, not really the doctors of this world. Not saying it's not possible for a doctor to come to this truth, but really those that are seen as wise in this world. That's not who the most High God is calling into this truth. Right. Not really the doctors, not the rich man of this world, um, the meat mills and things of that matter. Right. Not the um, the scientists. Right. And so on and so forth. That's not who the most High God is raising up in these last days for the most part. Right. It says, but the most High have chosen the foolish things of the world. Right. So the most High God chose the foolish things of this world. Right. That man that's um, that's at a low estate or that man that's in all matters of folly and wickedness. That man was probably shooting dice behind a damn dumpster somewhere. Right. That man was probably robbing his brother. He's probably a whoremonger. Right. He probably smoked weed all goddamn day. Right. He probably smoked cigarettes pack to pack. You see? This is who the, this is who the, um, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Sai is raising up in these last days, right? And it says, um, I'm going to read verse 27 again. It says, but the Most High have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. So Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Sai, he's chosen the foolish things of this world, right? The things that are despised, right? And the Most High have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. And um, we're the weak things of the world. You understand? When you think of the things that are mighty, like I said, you think about the doctors, you think about the um, people that's in high positions. You understand? That's the um, the, the more stronger things of this world, so to say. And um, verse 28, it says, in the base things of the world and things which are despised, right? And we're despised, Right? The so-called, the average so-called black man, really all, all this um, so-called black Native Americans and Hispanics are really surprised. I mean, um, Salakia, despised, but it's especially when you're still in the slums, right? When you're still living, um, what's the words I'm looking for? Like I said, these these low-level ways of life, right? You're still, you're a robber, right? You're a, um, a killer, right? You're a, a drug dealer, things of that matter, Right? But these are the, the people that the Most High God is using in his last days, right? The foolish of this world, right? So we started off as nothing. And it says, have the Most High chosen, yet the things that are not, to bring to naught things that are, right? And I want to go to Matthew, the 13th chapter. And that's where I really want to start off through the Spirit. Um, and I want verse, bear with me. Um, this is Matthew 13. In verse 31, it says, And another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The key. It says, Salaki. It says, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a grain of mustard seed, right? And let's let's look at a mustard seed, right? The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a grain of mustard seed. You see that? So a mustard seed is a really, really small seed. 
right? Meaning they let, they started off as something despised, something small, right? We were seen as nothing in this world, right? You see how small this is? This is what Yahweh Shai likened the kingdom of heaven unto, right? Likened the elect unto, right? Started off as nothing, despised upon the earth, foolish, Negroes, right? Going back to the scriptures, it says, which a man took and sold in his field, which is indeed the least of all seeds. And we're the least of all people on this earth, right? We're, we're at the bottom of the totem pole. We're called minorities. You understand? We're still in captivity till this day. We're still in the land of our captivity, the land where our forefathers was brought, was um, brought to, right? Beaten, right? Um, um, bug break, right? Raped, robbed, murdered. You understand? And we're still in this land to this day and we're seen as nothing. So that's why it says, which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs. Right. But hey, we're going to be the greatest of all people. You see? And and, and that's how Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai gets down. Right. It's like a beautiful movie with a beautiful ending. You understand? The movie starts off rough. Right. You 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 got the um. The um, what's, what do they call it? Um, the main characters, right, being the elect of the movie, it starts off super bad for them. You understand? It's almost like they they, they have no way out, right? Everything is all, everything is, is is just terrible for them, right? But the, the um, just like the um, the, the so-called white man's movie movies, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has a beautiful ending prepared for the elect, right? Because it says, which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs. So we started off as nothing, as slaves, right? As niggers, as captives, as bond men, bond women. You understand? It says, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs. And we're going to be kings on this earth. You understand? That's that's the beauty of this thing, right? And that's why we have to fight this fight. And we have to continue to endure, man, because we have a beautiful ending prepared for us. All through the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Right? It says it is the greatest among herbs and becometh a tree so that the birds of the air um, come and lodge in the branches thereof. Right. And that's going and, um, and the birds is going into the heathen is going to cleave unto us. You understand the heathen is going to have to come to us to learn the laws and things of that matter in the kingdom of heaven. Right. So they're going to lodge in the branches thereof. You understand. But we're going to um, um, enjoy the fatness of the tree of the kingdom. Right. Being the greatest on the earth. And um, let's go to let's go to the um first Samuel. Um, the second chapter, and, and this is verse nine. It says, verse eight, Salakia. I'm gonna start from verse seven. This whole thing is beautiful. It says, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. So it's all of the, of, of the Lord that we went through the slavery, and that um ultimately, if we endure, Lord willing, we're part of that number that we're going to be the greatest on the earth. It says he raised up the poor out of the dust, right? And that's what we're in right now. We're in the we're in the dust, right? The dust just represents us being in the lowest state, right? It says and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill, right? And and that's pretty much what we are on this earth. We're the beggar that's in that shit hill. You understand, right? In the spirit, it says to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. But ultimately, the elect are going to inherit the throne, right? And they're going to be joint heirs. With our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai, with the King of Yahshua Allah, right? For the pillars of the earth are Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai's, and He has set the road upon them. You see that? So it says, um, and you're gonna we're gonna start from the dung hill, right from a shit hill, right from the dust, and we're gonna inherit the throne of glory. You understand? That's what the Lord can do, and that's what the Lord is gonna do for His elect. You see? So let's go to um. There's another precept I have in mind. So, lucky I don't really have nothing written down. It's kind of th going through the spirit. Um, let's just go to Romans 8, right? Because I just um, paraphrased it. Um, this is Romans chapter 8 and verse... Um, bear with me. I believe it's 17 verse. Con. This is Romans 8 and 17. It says, And the children then hears the hears of the Most High and joint hears with Yahweh Shai, Right? Joint hears with Yahweh Shai, meaning the elect are going to inherit the same things that Yahweh Shai inherits in the kingdom of heaven. It says, if, if so be that we suffer with him. You see that? We have we had to suffer. We have to suffer on this side. Yahweh Shai suffered on this side, man. Right? Nobody suffered like our Lord and Savior. 
Right? So if we're going to be joint heirs with him, we're going to have to suffer just like he did. And that's what we're doing. We're suffering on this side, man. You know? It says that we may also, that we may be also glorified together. And through that suffering, right, through us enduring, right, and, all, and at the end, ultimately, we're going to be um, glorified with Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. I want to go to Sirach, the 22nd chapter. Right? Um, Sirach 22. And um, I believe it's this chapter. Bear with me. Um, Khan, this is what I want. This is actually a beautiful verse. And this is a precept for um, Romans the 8th chapter. Dealing with being joined here is with Yahweh shot. Right? So this is Sirach 22 and verse 23. It says, be faithful to thy neighbor in his poverty. Right? And, and who do we have to have faith in in these last days? We have to have faith in Yahweh shot. Right? And, um, and through the spirit, right? Um, and, and through faith, I believe that those who believe in Yahweh Shai right now, they believed in him um, in, in his past life, man. Right, Lord willing, we're one of those men, right, and for the sisters that's possibly listening, um, you're one of those sisters that follow Yahweh Shai in, in, his, in his past life, man. You were faithful to him even in his poverty. You understand? When he wasn't glorified on the earth, right? And it says that thou mayest rejoice in his prosperity, right? And through you being faithful, even through the times of Yahweh Shai's um, poverty, because right now, Yahweh Shai doesn't have a kingdom, right? We haven't, we haven't seen the Lord, but all through faith, we know that everything we read about the Lord is true. We know that everything we read in the scriptures is true. It says, be faithful to thy neighbor in his poverty, that thou mayest rejoice in his prosperity, right? And being faithful to Yahweh Shai, even through his poverty, um, when he gets his kingdom, we're going to rejoice in him, with him, in his prosperity. It says, abide steadfast unto him in the time of his trouble, that thou mayest be here with him in his heritage. You see that? That's that's the point. That's the that's the that's that goes exactly with Romans the eighth chapter. I'm gonna read that again. It says, Abide steadfast unto him in the time of his trouble, that thou mayest be here with him in his heritage. And by us being faithful to Yahweh Shai and preaching Yahweh Shai, we're gonna have trouble on this side. You understand? We're gonna go through a lot of trouble on this side. Right? We're gonna be despised on this side. The Yahweh Shai said we're gonna be hated by all men. Right? But we we don't care. We're willing to go through that to um because we, we believe in, a, in our Lord and Savior, you know? And it says, Abide steadfast unto him in the time of his trouble, that thou bayest be here with him in his heritage, right? Um, we're going to inherit the same things that Yahweh Shai inherits in the kingdom of heaven. You see? It says, For a mean estate is not always to be contemned, nor the rich that is foolish to be had in admiration, right? So a low estate is not always something to be looked down upon, Right? And that's what a lot of the um the Jews didn't get when Yahweh Shai um um was walking this earth. They're like, man, he he's from Galilee. Right? He, he who is he? He's poor. I know his brothers and sisters, mainly the ones especially from his um his um his hometown, you understand? They 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 despise the Lord, right? But really all the Jews despise the Lord, right? For the most not Salaki, let me let me let me clear that up because that's what a lot of Christians try to run away. Oh, didn't didn't it say his people? His, oh, he came to his own people and they didn't receive him. But what I'm saying is, a lot of the people they despise the Lord. But it, it, um, anybody that actually reads, they can see throughout the Gospels that it was Jews that believed. Even when you go to John the third chapter, you see Nicodemus was the actual Pharisee and a Jew, and he believed in the Lord, right? But the point is, hey, be faithful unto Yahweh Shai even right now, um, when he doesn't have a kingdom. Even right now, when having faith in Yahweh Shai is something that, that, that the world looks down upon, right? Even right now, having faith in Yahweh Shai is something that's going to make the world hate you, right? Hey, we're going to still have faith in them, man. And we're going to, um, we're going to be, um, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. It says that thou mayest be here with him in his heritage, right? And we're going to be joint heirs with him. You understand? Because we, we, we're willing to suffer with him, you know? And, um, let's go to Syrac the 10th chapter. I believe this is what I want. Um, Con, this is what I want. This is Sirach chapter 10 and verse um, 14. It says, The Lord have cast down the thrones of proud princes and set up the meek in their stead. And that's what the Lord is going to do. Right? We just have to remain humble. We have to remain meek. Right? And we have to be patient. Right? And when you go into that word, um, patience is dealing with the, uh, it's dealing with sufferings. Right? You have to be willing to go through sufferings. Right, and we read that in Romans the eighth chapter. If you're going to be joined hairs with Yahweh Shah, you have to be willing to suffer with him, like he did. You understand? Roughly paraphrasing. So it says, "The Lord have cast down the throne of proud princes and set up the meek in their stead." 
the Lord had plucked up the roots of the proud nations and planted the lowly in their place. And that's what the Lord is going to do. We have this, these, this, um, the proud Edomites, man. Right. And right now there, the Lord set them up to have a kingdom. But what the Lord is going to do in these last days, he's going to pluck them up. Right. He's going to set the lowly in their places. And who is the lowly? It represents the elect of Israel. You see? And it says, um, the Lord overthrew countries of the heathen. Right. And destroyed them to the foundations of the earth. Right. But the point I want is that the Lord is going to pluck them up and he's going to set the lowly in their place. And that's what we're longing for, man. Right. So we started off as slaves. We started off as nothing, man. Right. But in the kingdom of heaven, we're going to we're going to shine, man. We're going to shine bright, man. That's what it says in Daniel, the 12th chapter. Right. Let's bring that out, actually. Daniel 12 and, um, and verse three, it says, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. It's speaking about the elect. It says, and they that turn many to righteousness, right? And that's what we do in these last days through um through preaching. You understand? Which the world looks at as something that's to be despised, something that is foolish. You read about that in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter as well, right? The Lord thought it um good through to um um I'm gonna read it, right? I don't want to um butcher it too bad, right? Um, this uh, First Corinthians one, and um, I want to get straight to the point. Con, this is First Corinthians one and verse twenty one. It says, "For after that, for after that, in the wisdom of the Most High, the world by wisdom knew the Most High, knew not the Most High." It says, "It pleased the Most High by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe." And that's how we're gonna um, the elect are gonna turn many to righteousness by the foolishness of preaching, right? To so this world preaching. Going on the highways and byways and preaching the gospel, right? Um, being on the um, using a phone device to preach the gospel, the world looks at it as something that is foolish. They think it's a waste of time, right? That's 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 not going to change the world. You just talking is not going to change the world. Where's your action? That's what a lot of people like to say. We need to pick up guns. We need to own lands, right? You need some action. You just sitting around talking is not going to change the world. That's what these foolish people say, right? Um, preaching is is foolishness to this world. But we understand it's the power of the Most High, and we understand we understand that um, preaching is going to usher in our Lord and Savior. You understand who's going to bring forth that action to deliver us from this captivity, right? But the average the average um, man walking this earth, they don't understand these things. But going back to Daniel the twelfth chapter, I'm gonna read verse three again. It says, "And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament." You see, it says, "And they that turn many to righteousness, right through through preaching, right." As the stars forever and ever, right? So the elect are going to be stars in the kingdom of heaven. They're going to shine like the stars forever and ever, man. You see that? And that's what we're longing for, right? We're, we're seen as nothing right now, right? Our, um, we're, 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 we're despised upon the earth, but we understand that we're going to um, shine as stars forever and ever in the kingdom of heaven. You understand? And that's, that's, the, that's, that's, that's one of the promises, man. Right? Which is which is beautiful. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon in the third chapter. Right? It's Wisdom of Solomon 3 and verse 1, and it reads, But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of the Most High, and there shall no torment touch them, man. You see that? And it's speaking about the elect, and it's actually going to go into it as we read down. It says, And the sight of the unwise, they seem to die, and the departure is taken from misery. And this is going into... um. Actual physical death, but also also on the um, on the spiritual level. <coughs> Salaki, we seem to be um, dead, right? We're in cap, we're in the lowest state, we're in this captivity, right? But on the physical level, you're gonna have men that's gonna actually be martyrs in this thing, right? That's gonna actually give up the ghost in this thing, right? And it says, in the sight of the unwise, they seem to die, and the departure is taken for misery, and they're going from us to be utter destruction. But they are in peace. But ultimately, when we give up the ghost, we're gonna be in the third heavens. Right, and we're going to be at peace. And it says, for though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. Right, and though we go through punishment on this side, we understand through hope and through faith that we're going to receive immortality. Right, and it says, and having been a little chastised, right, because we, we were chastised on this side. Like we read in Romans the eighth chapter, um, you have to, um, if you want to be joint hairs with Yahweh Shah, you have to go through the sufferings that he went through, roughly paraphrasing. So it says, having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded, right? So though we're chastised on this side, we're going to be greatly rewarded, right? It says, for the Most High God pr proved them 
and found them worthy for himself. And the Lord has to prove you. The Lord is not just letting any nigga um, be part of the elect. Any nigga inherit the kingdom of heaven. You have to be proved. And how are you proved? You're tried through that furnace of affliction. You have to go through trials. You have to go through sufferings. Like we said earlier, that word patience is dealing with suffering. You see? So it says, um, um, six chat, that's just, that's just, I mean, six verse, that's the spirit. It says, as go in the furnace, have he tried them? You see that? And I just said that, and I wasn't even thinking about this next verse. But it says, as go in the furnace, have he tried them and received them as a burnt offering? You see? And it says, in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and fro, like we just read in Daniel, the 12th chapter, right? The, um, those that turn many to righteousness are going to um, shine like the stars forever and ever, roughly paraphrasing. And now we're seeing that same thing again. And um, I'm going to read it again. It says, in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble, right? But the elect are going to shine, you see? It says, they shall judge the nations and we're going to be judges and rulers of the earth. So we started off as nothing. We started off as captives, as bondmen, bondwomen, slaves, right? But the Lord said, but in the time of their visitation, they shall, uh, Salakia, the Lord said, they shall judge the nations. So you started off as a slave and you're going to become a, a ruler and a judge of the nations, man. As long as you continue to endure. And Lord willing, we're all part of that number. All through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Basham Yahweh Shai. Right? Because this is what we want, man. Right? This is what we labor for. You understand? And it says... And have dominion over the people. And we're going to have dominion over the people, man. Right? And their Lord shall reign forever. And our Lord, Yahweh, Right? Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, man. Going to reign forever. Yahweh Shai is going to have an everlasting kingdom. You read about that in Daniel the 7th chapter. Right? And it says, They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth. And such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints. And he have care for his elect. So that's what we're reading about, man. We're reading about the elect. It's not about the whole nation of Israel. You understand? This ministry is not about the whole nation of Israel. Right? The whole nation of Israel is not going to... um um. I don't want to use the wrong words because we understand through the prophecies. I don't want to get too deep. But the point is, it's about the elect. You understand? So let me read that ninth, that ninth verse again. It says... They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him for grace and mercy is, is, is to his saints and he have care for his elect, man. So just, I wanted to bring this out just to, just to exhort the brethren, exhort the, um, the, the sisters to continue to endure, man. Right? No matter, cause we're going to go through trials and tribulations on this side. We're going to go through sufferings like Yahweh Shai did, but you have to continue to endure cause we have an everlasting kingdom waiting for us. You see, Right? We have to continue to endure, right? The Lord said, those that turn many to righteousness are going to shine forever like the, um, shine like the stars forever and forever, man. So though you're seeing there's nothing on this side, though you probably, you got to go work that nine to five and you're struggling, you're barely getting by and paying your rent, man, right? You, you, you're scared in this captivity, man. You go, you have uh, thoughts of fear, right? You don't know what's going, you don't know if your kid's going to stay in the truth. You don't know if your wife's going to stay in this thing, your wife's going to endure. You don't know what's going to happen in that time of famine. Hey, this is, this is, that's, that's all part of the battle, man. You understand? And the Lord really tell us to, um, to not be careful of these things, man. Right? And have full faith in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Whatever happens is because Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai allowed it to happen, man. So, so that should be your comfort. You understand? Just every, just know everything is of the Lord, right? Just keep the faith until the end. Right? And um Lord willingness is edifying to the elect. I want to give all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai by Shem Rukakadash. Right? And um I want to give a mighty shalom to the mighty Akinwa Akwata tuning in the list to the words of the Lord. Shalom, Yasha Allah.